is Nerf Room. Today we're going to be reviewing the Mac 100. Did never do review this? No, I don't count that original video as a review because I didn't talk about anything. I just complained about it for five minutes straight. I think I did a firing demo and that was the whole video. It was quite possibly the worst review on my channel outside of the Phoenix review, which I promise I'm getting to eventually. But I think that I need to redo this blaster because, well, I want to be done reviewing Hyper Blasters until I inevitably get the Evolve 100 and have to do a video on that. And then I'm probably going to be done with Hyper forever because this series is not going anywhere from everything I can see. So what about the design? Um, yeah, I don't know. If you look really closely, you can kind of see a few similarities here. It's totally not just a direct mirror image of the Percy's with a couple details changed, though I understand why they did it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, and the Percy's had an extremely good design, which they actually improved on in a lot of places here, such as the longer stock and the better ergonomic foregrip that the Percy's just didn't have. The Percy's foregrip sucked. This one actually has a pretty good foregrip to hold on to. On top of that, it just looks really cool. I love the way that this barrel is kind of uh, put in place with the shell like that. I think that's a cool detail that takes me all the way back to the original end strike days. It's just, it's a nice design. And the hyper colors really do it justice. I think this blaster looks great. On top of that, they added a few subtle design changes that I think worked perfectly and they really missed out on with the Percy's, such as making this into a tactical rail that you can mount things on, which actually works way better for this blaster and I'll show you why in a moment. But first, let's go to the ergonomic. This blaster's got the whole three-in-one package, a main grip, a foregrip, and a stock. How good did they do? Well, let's find out. The main grip is extraordinarily angular. It is flat, solid, just like a cylinder. But it's actually pretty comfortable to hold on to, even though this rev trigger, good grief. It is big, and this angle is pretty sharp, and it's a little bit jarring on your ring finger, so I think they could have improved upon that, but it's not that big of a deal. You get used to it after using it for about 10 seconds. As for the foregrip, wonderful. Wonderful use of the huge battery door, because they gotta put the battery somewhere. They turned it into a big, chunky, ergonomic foregrip that's wonderful to put your left hand on, or your right hand on if you're left-handed. And what about the stock? Absolute improvement from the Percy's. It's longer and it's more solid. The Percy's stock works, but it's just too short. The blaster is a primary class blaster, and it feels like you're using an elite blaster, or even, heaven forbid, a dino squad blaster. This one feels good. It feels competitive, and it feels professional. And just like with any blaster that has this sort of high performance thing that they're going for, it's got a safety. It's only on the left side for some reason, so if you're left-handed, pressing this is gonna be a nightmare and a half, but it works. And the safety actually has a nice click to it. It's kind of fun to do that. As for the rev trigger and the main trigger, the rev trigger is just this humongous yellow button. It is a gigantic rev trigger. It's literally the biggest rev trigger I've ever seen, but it works. It's just a big button for you to press in with your middle finger. The main trigger barely has any move to it at all. Like if I push this, it's 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 a really subtle move, just like the Percy's had. Though that works considering this blaster's high rate of fire, which you will definitely see some emphasis on in the firing demo. Speaking of which, let's get onto the functionality. To load this blaster, this is the hopper door. You push it up and it stays open and it's made incredibly well. Then you load in a hundred odd hyper rounds into the actual hopper, which has the same mechanism as the Percy's or the Prometheus or the Nemesis. Well, actually just the Prometheus or the Nemesis because the Percy's mechanism was really weird. Then you close it and when it locks, you're good to go. To rev, rev trigger, and then it's fully automatic. And it is worth noting that yes, this blaster sounds like a vacuum cleaner and a dying cat when you're using it. Two in one package, and it has an annoyingly long rev up time for some reason. I don't know why, because the Percy's rev up time was absolutely super fast. This one takes its sweet time. But wait, hold your horses, we can't get onto the firing demo yet. We need to talk about this rail. This is a hyper refill can. Hasbro sell these wholesale. You can get these at Walmart, you can get these at Target, you can get these anywhere. They clip directly onto the rail if you can actually successfully get it on. Look at that. That is perfect. And it was literally made to do that. You can also do this to slide it down. And then, check this out, look. You can get another one. They have two sizes. That's 150 rounds on your blaster. That's why I think this rail system was such a good idea, because you can do this with it and have like millions and millions of rounds on the blaster, ready to pop right off, open, and reload one-handed. Because these refill can, I mean, this is why Hyper was a good idea. That is cool. 
You can pop those open and reload them with one hand while you're still shooting. It just sucks that Hyper went south, but it doesn't matter. Let's get on to the firing demo. For tactical swag purposes, I'm gonna leave these on while I do the firing demo. I'm gonna try and get the most consistent feeding out of it. Emphasis on most consistent. You are going to see why this blaster is so bad right about now. Yeah, we got some stuff to talk about. All right, so you guys are probably wondering what in the higgledy piggledy just happened. Allow me to demonstrate. This is a blaster that uses the same mechanism that the Prometheus and the Nemesis does. Not something that was designed to work with rubber rounds in mind. And the mechanism is completely unchanged from those two blasters. If you look at the agitator, like, <clears throat> stupid glare. If you look at the agitator, it's the same. It is literally the exact same thing that you will see if you look into a Prometheus. This blaster requires a different type of agitator mechanism in order to functionally feed rubber rounds. Why did they do rubber rounds at all? I have no idea. Because it would have been better to do foam rounds in every single way. I could complain about hyper rounds, but I plan on doing a video talking about ammo types in the future. Don't you worry, I'll get to that. But all you really need to know is, the sad truth, this blaster is super good! But the fact that you have to use hyper rounds with it just completely kills the potential it has. And I genuinely mean this thing has a ridiculous amount of potential that is just obliterated by the fact that you have to use this nerfed type of ammunition. Literally nerfed. If these rounds were made of foam, this blaster would probably be one of my favorite blasters of all time. It's got an unbelievably high rate of fire. The conveyor belt is moving at the same speed as the Nemesis and the, or the Prometheus. No, the Prometheus. Which means that you would actually get faster rate of fire than the Prometheus because the rounds are smaller and more efficiently able to travel. So yeah, that would just work out. It looks great. It's comfortable. The blaster is well designed. It feels great. The plastic quality is high. The functionality of being able to open this, take these canisters off, and be able to one-handed reload whenever you need to is genius and brilliant. The blaster is good. The ammo is not. Hasbro! Hasbro! You were so close! You were so, so close, like closer than you've ever been before. And yet it still is a flop. I can't recommend this unless you plan on getting like paintball rounds or something to put in it. 50 caliber paintball rounds do work with this. That's my recommendation. If you get one of these, have 50 caliber paintball rounds. Ideally ones that aren't already filled with paint when you get them so that maybe you can actually use them as hyper round substitutions. But that's pretty much all I have to say. If you do want to get one of these and you do have 50 caliber paintball rounds, I will link this in the description below. With that said, thanks for watching. Bye. Alright, so like this one time I completely filmed and edited the entire video and then had something else I wanted to add. Hey, so like my dad and I were screwing around and we completely had an epiphany. We decided to try putting baby powder on the rounds to see if it would change the consistency and uh, yeah, the results were very informative. not an improvement I don't know what is and like I've actually think we found a way to make this a feasible ammo type and if you're wondering how I did it I basically just took some baby powder and sprinkled it in the top of this not too much and then just shook it around for like 20 minutes and now it's, it's just it's perfect so, so try this at home this isn't a do not try this at home please try this at home okay I'm done talking now <laughs>